Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Corsair 5000D Airflow, a mid-tower ATX case from Corsair, which has a number of different installation options to it, and it's a really nice case with a number of really nice highlights to it. Now, I'm going to do an unboxing video and installation setup, a really in-depth one that will be quite long, but I'm also going to be covering off all the different accents, the features of the case, the highlights, the intricacies of building in it, and showing the different possibilities as well as you can see from this initial clip of the setup process I have 12 fans currently set up in here you can potentially have 13 you can also mount up to two 360 mil radiators there's liquid cooling options and there's all sorts of other goodness there's loads of potential with the 5000d airflow it's also a very nice looking case and with the right setup you can get it running really quiet it comes with two fans as standard but there are plenty of options to it As you can see, the end result looks really nice. Now, I'm going to be showing off a variety of different things as I go through this build. For reference, I'm also going to do a couple of other videos separately, if you're interested. I'm going to do a shorter video where I just cover the pros and cons of this case, if you don't want to watch the entirety of this one. I'm also going to do a video separately on the Corsair H150i Elite Capilux in white that you'll see set up as part of this video. And I'm going to do another video on how to set up this case with just the two fans that are included in it and what the performance is like in that setup versus the setup that I have here with a multitude of fans. I'm going to also talk to you about the fans that I'm using in the case and how I've set it up and what the options are because obviously you don't need to follow this exact setup for your build. You might choose to go with less fans or more fans or liquid cooling. There are plenty of different options and that's one of the highlights of this case. It's a very nice solidly built piece of kit with a really nice design aesthetic to it. I did a video on the Corsair 4000D Airflow, which was quite similar to this, but a bit more compact and it didn't have nearly as many options in terms of installation. This one has a lot more features to it and makes it quite similar to my favorite case, which is the Lian Li Dynamic XL I've been using for quite some time, in that you have a variety of options with the different fan mountings and you'll see included on the rear, for example, you have the ability to side mount some fan there. Another really nice highlight to this case that you'll see as I go through is this door on the back which basically allows you to shut away all your cables so if you're not great at cable tidying then that's ideal. There are other things included in here too. You'll see I've just pulled out this little tray which I'll show you that goes on the front and you can swap that out. You also have removable panels. You'll notice all this sort of home texture design to it basically allows for maximum airflow while still maintaining that aesthetic because obviously you can install RGB fans in here as I'm going to and still get a good look through there and you get the multitude of fantastic dust filters that Corsair always supplies so there's one on the front there's one on the top and there's one on the underside so minimize the amount of dust getting pulled into your case which is fantastic held in place with magnets really easy to install and fantastic in that way as well now here you can see it out of the box initially and you'll note there's just one fan at the front in the middle and then there's another one at the rear for exhaust now Corsair says you can actually set it up like this and those two fans are designed to ensure maximum airflow in terms of shooting air from the front straight over your graphics card or the CPU and then out of the rear for exhaust and I'll be interested to see what that stacks up like versus the logical thing which is filling the case with as many fans as possible. It's designed to take loads of fans. If you want great airflow surely you want more fans that's why you bought an airflow case so that's the logic I'm applying with this build but I am going to do a separate test with benchmarks to see how the different options stack up. Now, as I said, the front panel comes off. If you watch my 4000D video, you notice a lot of similarities with this case design. It's very similar, and that's not a bad thing because the design of that case was pretty good in a number of ways. And there were a few cons to it, and there still are to the 5000D, but different ones. So there's been some improvements with the 5000D over the 4000D airflow, and I'm going to cover those and talk about what they are. But also there's still some niggles, but they're very small ones. And 
generally speaking it's actually been very nice to build in and the end result is a really nice looking machine i'm sure you'll agree by the end of it here you can see the close-up accents there's a nice bit in the back here that you'll see that basically works as a cable hiding panel so if you're not installing fans on that rear side bit you can leave that in place and that hides away most of your cables another thing here is you'll see markings that let you know what sort of motherboard this can handle so it does micro ATX, ITX and EATX motherboards and it's capable of all those and I'll also include all the specs that you need to know about in the description. On the rear you also have the ability to install four SSD drives and two standard platter hard drives as well. So you have three SSD trays there that you can see that are removable and I'm going to show you a bit more detail about those in a minute because you can remove them and install them elsewhere which is interesting and another thing you can do is you can install them on the back of the back plate that sits behind your motherboard which I'll show you later on. Another highlight is that it has this PWM fan controller in here. You can plug up to six fans into that and then all you need is SATA power and a PWM header on your motherboard and you can control the fan speed of those fans. I'm not going to use that for this setup and show you how that works as well because it's pretty easy to set up and straightforward. Now this is the back plate that I was talking about. You can take that off and I have done for mounting because obviously you need to put the back plate on your motherboard to mount the cooler but here you can see a close-up of it and you'll note that it says HDD and also SSD so the proposal is that if you want to mount your drives in a space other than the standard ones you can put them on here so you can include an SSD on the back of this for example and that's how they claim you could fit up to four otherwise you see you have the three trays at the rear here so if you have a multitude of storage drives that you want to use then you can do that i'm only going to be using one in this build and i'm not using any hard disk drives and for good reason but i will show you why later on now down at the bottom you'll see the cables for the front panel management i'll talk to you about how this works a bit later on but there's usb usb-c sata power obviously power for the reset buttons front panel audio and other things too I'd recommend referencing your motherboard manual for where to install these, but I am going to show you how to set up some of them a bit later on and talk about the interesting highlights of them because there's actually a very nice addition to this case in the form of a very small accessory that's included in the box, which makes life a bit easier depending on how you set your case up as well. So already you can see a number of really nice highlights to the design and it carries on impressing as you go through as well. Now, like the 4000D and a lot of other Corsair cases, because they're very good with this sort of thing, there's a nice cable management system on the rear that runs on the left hand side and on the right as well so you have two spaces you'll note that they have velcro ties on them too which basically allows you to keep your cables in place without having to use plastic cable ties which i think is great because it means you can temporarily keep the cables in place as you putting the thing together and make things a lot neater and easier now down at the bottom there's a hdd case so you can basically install your hard disk drives up to two if you have them and you can see you just slot them in there now with the 4000d i noticed there was a problem removing this tray uh, these screws were really tight in and it was really difficult to get in there i'm happy to report with the 5000d i didn't have a problem obviously if you do you could use a coin or pliers or a stubby screwdriver to get it out but it came out for me really easily which was nice because on the 4000d it was a nightmare close up you'll also note that you can move that tray forward towards the front of the case if you want so if you have a larger power supply unit quite big one for example you can mount it further forward and then you have easier access i will note though that i did do this as in pushed it forward and mounted it there and yet still when I went to mount my power supply unit, as you'll see later on in the video, I found that there wasn't enough room there still. It looks a lot quite roomy, but actually is quite tight in that way. So a bit more on that as we go through. Now inside one of those hard disk drive trays, you get a little accessory box that includes, as you can see, 12 Velcro straps. So you've got loads of straps for strapping those cables down and keeping them out of the way. And they're easy to install. And I'll show you how to install the extra ones if you need them a bit later on. This little right angled accessory for your USB front panel connection, which makes life easier depending on how you're setting it up. If you're mounting a radiator on the side of the case, this is particularly useful 
and then a multitude of screws. There's also an extra rear mount for the door. As you might have seen that earlier on, basically keeps the door from slamming. You have eight washers, three extra motherboard standoffs, although you have standoffs included as well anyway, installed, pre-installed. And then there's 20 short fan screws, 18 motherboard and hard disk drive screws, which are the very small ones with a round head on top, and then eight SSD screws as well. So a number of different screw options included in the box, basically everything you need, which makes life nice and easy as well. One thing I will note that is sad is they don't include any plastic cable ties, but the Velcro ties are actually very good for keeping the back nice and neat. And one bonus of this case, as I've already said, is that back panel, the door, once you shut that, that shuts away a lot of your shame and it's actually surprisingly easy to get quite a lot of cables going on back there and control boxes. And you'll see that as I go through because I basically left the cables kind of messy because I wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to shut things away and not have to worry about it. It's very nice and you can just admire the front of your case and not have to worry about what's going on in the rear. Now for installing the side fans, you need to take this panel off and you access that from the back. Um, there are a number of screws to it, which are on the left hand side and then they're hidden underneath the Velcro ties on the cable management system. So you need to remove those straps in order to access those screws. This wasn't initially obvious or immediately obvious to me. And so it took a minute to work out but it's also a bit of a pain because it means you have to remove those straps and then you have to put them back in again, which can be a bit of a fiddle. So hopefully this will make that a bit easier for you if you're planning on doing it. But basically it's nice to be able to remove that tray. You can take the tray out then you can align your fans as I'm going to install them and then put it back in place. And you can see that there, nice bit of tray. And there's obviously two of these because you have one for the front as well. And then there's the cable shield. Now for this installation, I'm going to be taking that off as well because I'm going to be installing three fans on the side. You could leave that in place and then you could just have the cables nicely hidden behind it. If you're not going to use the side panel for those fans, you could just leave that there and you don't have to use that side panel. You don't have to put fans on the side at all. It's a personal choice about how you do it and that shows you the different options available. Now, as I said, you have the option to mount two 360 mil radiators in here. You think there will be three, but you can't mount two with the front and the side at the same time. You can only do the front and the top or the side and the top. You can't do all three. Now, for the case itself, I'm going to be using Corsair's ML120 Pro RGB fans for the front and side fans. And I'll show you the setup process for that now. I've done videos on these fans separately before. If you want to make the most of your RGB, you might be better off looking at Corsair's QL120 fans, which are really nice. And I've done videos on those before, as well as the setup process. Now, if you get a triple pack of ML120 RGB Pros, you get an RGB hub and an LED core and I'm going to show you how to set that up as well and then obviously the fans screws to install the fans and cables to connect it because you need to connect the LED hub to your motherboard via USB connection to then control the fans lighting from Corsair's IQ software. But here you can see the ML120 RGB Pros. They're very nice fans. Decent airflow. Of course, they're well known for the ML120 fans and then delivering a good high quality amount of airflow and that's why we're going for those ones in this of course they was kind enough to send these over the ql 120s aren't as good for airflow but if you want an aesthetic they are probably preferable because you even if you mount them backwards for intake purposes you don't see as much of that sort of back end of the fan that you will see on the side or front of my case internally now, when you're setting up the fans, you need to make sure that you're setting them up so that the cables go to the rear and are pointed in the right direction. I actually made a mistake on the front panel version of this, which I'll show you in a minute, and had them initially the wrong way around. But with this one, you can see that I've basically run them into the back. Quite easy to do with this rear one because they're just tucked away nicely anyway. And then you've just got a bit of a fiddle to try and get it back in place with the screws because that move the cables out of the way, sort of hold it in place to be able to then screw it down 
on both sides. But that setup process is generally pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to be using the PWM controller that's included in the box for the power of these fans and then the RGB lighting node and the LED core to do the RGB lighting side of things. But you can see the installation set up here with those mounted on the side. And you'll see what I was talking about. You obviously have the crisscross of the rear of them, but these are set to intake. So you can see the, where the front is, that's where the air is getting pulled from. So I'm pulling air from the back of the case in side of it, and then I'm going to exhaust through the top. Now your SSD trays, as I said, you can take them off from the rear and you can mount them on the front which is pretty interesting so that's uh, an option and it's actually worth considering in the way I'm going to be doing it because I'm going to be installing multiple controllers at the back and so I want those SSD trays out of the way you could just take them out if you're not using them if you're using NVMe SSDs or if you're just using standard platter hard drives or a mixture of those two you don't need to keep those trays in there you can just take them out now the front panel that comes out just as easily as the back one Actually, probably a bit easier because it's just held in place with thumb screws. And then it's just a case of removing that standard air guide fan. I kept it in place initially so I could then work out where the other fans were going to go and screw them in easily. And this is the point that I was making about making sure you install the fans the right way because I initially got the cables the wrong way around. The clips on the right hand side that you can see here, those are the ones that are going to slot into the back. And so you want the cables to be pointing out that side so that you can then put them into the back of the case and keep the mess to a minimum. And there is a quirk to this installation with this front panel which I'll show you which results from the rear panel. So you can see the setup now, I've got the fans installed the proper way with the cables pointing in the direction I want them to. Obviously you then need to manage two cables for each fan, but the setup is basically, I'm in, in taking air from the front and the side now. So I've got six fans pulling in air from the front and side into the case, keeping things nice and cool, putting the airflow in there. I'm making the most of a maximum amount of airflow here as I can while also using the controller that's included to keep things nice and straightforward. Once that's done you can then just slip this back in place, get those two notches in on the side and then screw those thumb screws in to hold it in place. Fairly straightforward. What you will note now is I then need to get the cables for those three front fans to run into the rear and what I found and what I came across immediately is there's an issue because there's no holes for those fan cables at least when you've got the three on the side installed and so so it's a bit tricky because it's not obvious immediately how you're going to do it. Obviously you can't run them across the front of the ones that are installed on the back because that would be messy. So what I ended up doing was I installed it so the bottom cables for the bottom fan went out underneath the bottom down here near where the hard disk drive tray is and sort of slipped underneath the bottom of the rear fan and then I went for the top and middle and tried to go over the top. Now one thing I thought was you could hook them through the loops where the rear panel door goes in and it is actually possible to do because there's enough room so the cables don't get squashed. So just for demonstration purposes it doesn't take up too much space and it is possible but the problem here is obviously where are the cables going to go when they go across that fan area. They might end up getting in the way and getting caught in the, in the fans themselves which could obviously lead to a problem. So I ended up fiddling around and running them over the top and actually managed to get it quite neat. Now once they're through to the back, the RGB connections on those fans needs to go into the RGB hub. And then on the top of that, on the right hand side, you then connect that into the LED core, which I'll show you a bit later on. Now, if you want a sequence where the RGB lighting goes through one fan, then into the next one, then into the next one, and the next one, and goes up and down your case, basically, you need to make sure you plug these in in the right order. So it's various, basically going through from the front, bottom, there's number one, and then the middle two, top three, and then rear top four, and then basically following that sequence and end up with having all six of them plugged in. And you can see the final result here with that. Now, as I said, the power I'm going to use the PWM controller for, and again, use that same logic. So apply and plug in the power cables from each of those fans in the same order into the PWM controller, which is clearly marked. And once you get to the end of that, you then need to plug that into a PWM 
system fan header on your motherboard and that allows you to then control the speed of the fans from your motherboard software which is pretty handy and then this controller just needs SATA power so that's a fairly straightforward affair now you can run that cable through to the front and I'm just plugging it into my system fan header but make sure you check your motherboard manual to work out which one's the best for you the RGB hub has a sticker on the rear of it that can be removed and plugged in obviously point of note again is all of this is additional purchase these fans that rgb hub and all that doesn't come with the case as standard the case itself only comes with the two air guide fans it does have the pwm controller but this is basically i'm showing you the potential options for how you could set the case up now once the fans are all plugged in you need to then plug this connection into the led core and then plug that in to the end of the rgb hub the led core then needs sata power and then that also needs to be plugged in via a usb cable you can see here so you plug that into the top of that and then that goes into the usb header on your motherboard that then lets you control the lighting of those fans via corsair's iq software and it means that you can sync that lighting up with other corsair things more fans for example as i'll show you in a minute or other peripherals that you might have so you've got our led lighting control from one and then the power control from the other now here's how to get those velcro straps back in you have to put them in backwards and they're a bit of a fiddle to get through i found if you just bent them around maybe created a bit of a hook on them it is possible to get them back in and there are multiples of them included in the case which as i said earlier is fantastic because it basically means you can get those cables nice and neat as you go through now another option for controlling the fans if you don't want to use the pwm controller is another separate purchase in the commander pro this is a brilliant fan controller which allows you to plug in up to six fans two led connections two usb ports and four temperature sensors and this is great i've done a videos on this in the past it's a fantastic bit of kit it is an extra purchase but it makes life a lot simpler because you can see that you have that led connection so you don't need the lighting node core you can plug your rgb fan hubs directly into this and you can plug your fans into that for the fan speed instead of the pwm controller another point of note is that corsair told me that you can use the pwm controller take the pwm's output and put that into one of the connections on the commander pro if you're using that which means that you can put in more fans into this case because as i said as standard you can have 10 if you do a push pull setup with your radiator which i'm going to do you could have 13 potentially so you have 13 fans maximum in here so here is the corsair iq h150i elite caplix in white and i've done a video on the black version of that separately but i'm going to do a video on this white one separately as well but i'm going to show you the basic steps for setup on this now and then in the other video i'll do benchmarks and things like that so you can get an idea of how it performs one of the things that i'm going to show in this video is how to do push pull setup on it because i think some people might want to do that you might want to take advantage of the design of this case in order to do it inside this box is corsair's ml120 fans but there are different versions for the ml 120 rgb pros which is worth bearing in mind because it's best to use the same fans for your push pull setup and if you can help it the same fans throughout the case so in my instance i'm going to be using i happen to have two lots of these ml120 fans from the elite catholic setup because i had the previous version so it's not a problem for me but I'd recommend using ML120 RGB Pros for the entire thing. Get six of them if you can. Here you'll see the Commander Core, which is included with the Elite Capilux cooler. And that is basically a variant of the Commander Pro. And that, again, makes life set up really easy. I'm going to talk to you about that as I go through. This cooler also works with both Intel and AMD setups. And it has a removable faceplate that you can swap out with another one and customize the design. You can even 3D print your own if you're that cool. The cooler itself is also very nice and it comes with pre-installed thermal paste. So the setup of this thing is really simple and it's a very nice looking bit of kit actually. The white one looks a lot better than the black one. And there are some other minor changes that they've made to this cooler, which makes it a lot easier to install and it's really nice. Now as standard, it comes with white fans. Obviously it's a white 
AIO so it comes with white fans and that has a very nice aesthetic to it but as you've seen already I've been using black fans the rest of the case so I'm going for a kind of a white and black theme and so I'm going to mount those white fans on the top where they won't be as visible. Now you'll note that this is quite an interesting design that Corsair has gone through. They've recessed the top so that you can mount your fans on top if you so choose and obviously this gives you different options but for this I'm going to be doing the push-pull setup where I'm using the fans that come with the Elite Capelix on top and I'm going to be exhausting through them so I'm setting them up to pull air through and then I'm using the black ones that I have to have spare and I'm mounting them on the radiator. One of the issues I've had with Corsair rads in the past is getting the long radiator screws to install in the rad through the fans has always been a real pain. On this one, on the new white one, it is actually a joy. I didn't have any trouble on either side installing the long screws in. They screwed in perfectly first time without any hassle, which I can't tell you how fantastic that was because I was dreading setting this up, but really good, dead easy to do. So I installed the fans the black fans on that one, obviously making sure they're going to go to the rear. I know which way around I'm going to put my rad in, so it's worth working that out before you start. Now I've put the other fans on top and I'm just putting the screws in place. You see the longer ones. And it's also worth noting they send enough to do this. So they actually send enough screws in the package for you to do a push-pull setup, even though you don't have enough fans included in the box because you only have three. But if you happen to have six, there's enough screws in there so you can do this. So now what I'm going to do is hold that rad in place with the screws that are going through the top fans. So they're screwing through the top fans into the case, through the case, and then into the radiator. That then holds that in place. And then you have a push-pull setup. But the bonus of this is because those fans are on top and they're in this recessed section on top of the case, they aren't inside the case as a push-pull setup usually would be, which means you have the benefit of extra room. So there's no hassle or worry potentially about how that will impact your motherboard or how you can set that up. And there are obviously other options. You could front mount the rad or side mount it. There are a variety of different ways to do it. I'd say either top mount or side mount would be the best option and front for intake because that'll give you the best airflow. Now here's the Commander Core, which as you can see is very similar to the Commander Pro. Now the Commander Core is better in my mind, apart from the fact that it doesn't have the USB connection on it. But what it does do is it allows you to plug in both the fan power and the RGB lighting for each of those fans straight into that. You don't need to worry about an extra RGB hub for them. So I'm going to install all six of those fans into that Commander Core, making sure they're going in the right sequence that would match up with the front ones that I was running through, but also just generally making sure both cables for the power and the RGB go into the relevant slots. So for one fan, it was obviously RGB one, fan one. The next fan's RGB two, fan two. So you've got the power and that matched up along there. Another thing that you'll note is that randomly wanted to test this out is that you can put the dust cover on top of the fans and then the standard cover on top of that. No problems at all there. The fans don't interfere with it and it is possible to do. People will argue and say you shouldn't put a dust cover on top of something that's exhausting because why would you? Dust is not going to come from inside your machine. But I still like to do it because when my machine's not on, you might get dust falling from the sky into there. Anyway, then you've got the Commander Core all set up with all the fans plugged in. You then need to connect the pump head and the pump head connects via this simple connection. You can see the little marking. That's another highlight and change that they've done, which makes it easier. It lets you know which way round you need to install that dead simple that control box then needs SATA power and a USB connection and then it will work as standard now here's that mount that you saw earlier on you can essentially you have two different mounts that you can put on the front which basically accounts for the options of what you've done whether you've installed radiators or fans whether you want to hide things back there or whether you want to show it off and maybe get a bit more space I've gone for this lower one if you had a front mounted or side mounted radiator that obviously gives you a bit of extra room as well so it's preferable now we're getting near the end of that section of the build and you can see all the fans looking pretty good most of the cables are out of sight and it's looking pretty neat there are a number of cable tidying hooks and sections in the case both front and back which will make it even easier to get things really neat if you're really OCD about these things but I think generally speaking apart from maybe in that top corner where the front panel cables coming out is 
looking okay so far. I've got it set up like this. Now the reason I did it like this is a strange order. Usually I put the motherboard in first and then install all the radiator and that. But I'm basically moving my PC from one case to another. So I wanted to minimize the amount of time I didn't have access to a computer. So that's why. But this actually backfired on me and I'll talk to you about that in a second. Front panel USB connections quickly. You'll see you have two front panel USBs with the yellow accent on them and a USB-C. And then obviously HD audio reset button and power button. For me, it's a bit of a shame because I'm actually missing out on some USB connections because I've got two front panel USB headers on my motherboard so I'm actually losing some versus the dynamic XL but otherwise it's a very nice setup and pretty straightforward. You'll note that that rear door that rear panel there has a nice bit of mesh on it and another dust filter so there's plenty of goodness going on here. Now for the installation of course there's RM850X which is my power supply unit. I've done a video on this separately if you're interested and want to find out more about it. It's a 850 watt power supply not too huge and a pretty good amount of power for what I'm going to be installing in here. I'm going to include the specs for the PC in the description if you want to check that out. It's a Intel Core i9 10900K, 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and an MSI RTX 3080 Supreme graphics card. Uh, SSD drive and three NVMe drives and obviously the cooler and other things all of that stuff basically means this amount of power is worthwhile having but what you will notice there is that I had problems installing this PSU with the hard drive cage in there still and I've also gone for the option of not putting the power supply unit cables in before I installed it it might actually be more sensible to do that it, it makes it a lot less sort of faffy once you get in there but I think you'll probably find that it's quite tricky to get in now if you have hard disk drive I think they might be a bit difficult to install if I'm honest with this amount of space unless you have very small hands that's probably one problem we might have with this case you can see there isn't much room there where it, the hard disk drive tray was initially mounted is basically where the front connections would be touching now as I put them in here so it would be impossible with it as it sets as standard and if you mount it further back it's probably plausible but it would be very tight so you definitely would want to put the cables in first then put the power supply unit in but you probably have to remove the cage as well because I couldn't even get the PSU in there with that cage on the front so quite tricky and a bit fiddly and one of the potential problems with it. Now one of the nice things that I do like that you've just seen there is that door comes off. So that door can be removed when you're in the build process which makes life a lot easier and then when you finish put it back on close it and hide all your shame away. Fantastic really simple. Now as I said the case itself has the motherboard standoffs pre-installed and there are extra ones if you need them. I've got an EATX motherboard. This is the MSI Z490 Godlike. Really nice motherboard by the way. And the installation of that was very simple. It's EATX and as I said there are included screws in the box that you just seen there with the sort of round head on them. Those are the motherboard screws and they also work for the SSDs and you basically just need to screw your motherboard down and secure it in place. And now I'm going to see, show you the setup of the AI. You can basically get that pump in the store so just showing off that. So included in the box, this is a Z490, which means it's LGA 1200 socket. And as I said, I'll go into more depth on this setup process and the cooler itself in a separate video. But basically for my setup, all I need to do is install this back plate at the rear and then some standoffs for the pump head that are inside this container and screw that down. You can see there are separate ones marked for whichever setup of socket you have. Mine is the LGA 1200, so that's the bag I need. It's all nicely labeled. So of course they make the setup of this fairly straightforward. Very nice pump that goes really nicely with the 5000D. So if you're wondering which one to go for, this might be worth considering. It is one of the nicest looking ones I've seen 
recently for sure and certainly nicer looking than the black one not that, that was a bad look so this plugs in the rear you'll note there's a 3m sticker to hold it in place and then the standoff screw screwing on the other side i'd recommend if you're doing this to hold the back plate in place while you screw one of those screws in because it makes life a lot easier once you've done that then it's just four screws in either corner around the cpu and then you just put in the pump head down on top and screwing that down in place nice easy straightforward setup process as you can see things are coming together fairly nicely so far we haven't had much in the way of hassles now the pump head itself has thermal paste pre-installed and you can see the way i've set it up it looks like it's going to be a problem because the front of it the pump is upside down or at least the plate on the front is but the good news is because it's removable you can actually take it off and turn it round so you can get it set up the way you want it now there are a number of different ways to set up your pump and i'm probably going to get people to tell me that this is wrong but it works well and i've done a good test on it and it runs quietly and the good thing about this aio is that it runs with a zero rpm mode where you can basically say it's the fans don't come on unless they're required to which means it's insanely quiet really good design now another thing that i mentioned earlier and i'm showing off here is that you can remove that front plate and you can change it for another one that's included in the package and you end up with a different look to it i actually prefer the extra one the secondary one it looks a bit nicer a bit cleaner and has a really cool design to it now this is with an intel bracket as standard it will fit with amd but you need to do some other changes to get things to fit nicely but the installation is really simple with these pumps basically just put it down in place and then screw it down ever so gently don't over tighten it with the thumb screws and make sure that that's held in place nicely but not so over tighten they might destroy things now you'll note there's cables coming out of the bottom of the pump you've got to work out where those are going to run to to keep things neat one cable goes to either the cpu pump either the cpu fan header on your motherboard or the pump header on your motherboard i'm going to use the pump one and then you'll note the other cable goes around to the rear so you can see i've got pump fan one at the top here i'm going to install that and basically connect this little connector here it's a three pin connector that connects to a four pin header on the motherboard and it's the same for the cpu fan but don't worry it will work perfectly well here without issue check your motherboard manual for the recommendations on where now now here we come a cropper and this is my fault potentially but an interesting note if you're doing a setup similar to mine i'm running two psu cables to the top to power the motherboard for my cpu and those need to go in uh, through the top which is not necessarily an issue or at least it seems like it's not going to be you've got a nice bit of channeling running along the side there so you can hide that and then you just run them out the top however this is where i had a problem because i'd already mounted the radiator i found there wasn't enough room between the gap that the radiator was leaving and the motherboard and the pump and the radiators itself which essentially meant that i couldn't fit the power cables through and you can see i actually cut that footage down but there was about five minutes of me desperately trying to get that through there before i gave up and realized i was going to have to remove the rad again so let's take the rad off which in fairness isn't that hard i just have to remove the screws from the top fans and then put it into place plug in those two cables and you can just put it back again so i'd recommend probably installing your motherboard first and the power cables first and then doing the rad next however there was another issue when i went to put it back is that i found that the fit between the radiator and the fans installed on it and those power cables is now very tight it is pushing against the top of those power cables unfortunately i haven't got a clip of it but it's very tight fit and quite awkward this is obviously going to depend on your power cables and also on your motherboard setup but it's worth bearing in mind now the front panel connections also need setting up obviously and then all the sata power you can see i've got sata power for the rgb for hub the led lighting node core and the commander core they all need sata power the front panel connections run through this is the usb-c connection for the front panel and that plugs in there and then you have the other usb connection which can be a bit fiddly and because it's quite tight it fits in one of these connections i've got two 
you probably will have one. Most people have one unless you've got a very fancy motherboard. And you'll see that there's quite a lot of bend to it. But then, of course, there's included this accessory, which normally you'd have to buy separately, which is a 90 degree angle adapter, which allows you to plug in the cable at a different angle. This will be very useful to you if you've decided to side mount your radiator on the side because you won't have enough space around there for that cable to plug in. And I found this with other PC builds I did with the Lian Leo. I had trouble with it. And this is a really nice addition that you wouldn't normally get for free. Now, then it's a case of running the USB cables from the various devices at the rear, Commander Core, Commander Pro if you're using it, the RGB Fan Hub. Those things need to be plugged in with a USB connection. That goes to the USB header on the bottom of your motherboard usually. Check the manual again to make sure you know where that's being installed. Now, I'm going to show you the installation of SSD. I've only got one standard SSD drive in my setup. And it's perfect to be able to show you the potentials for it. This is a 1TB 860 Pro Evo drive from Samsung. Uh, nice drive for sure and useful for demonstrating this setup. So as I said earlier, you can install these drives on the front if you so wish. You can see around the back I've got a lot of control boxes installed now so there's not much room left so installing it on the front is actually a potentially good option however when i went to plug in the sata power connection and the connection to plug into my motherboard i found that i couldn't actually mount this because the pcie power for the bottom of the motherboard that plugs in there as necessary alongside the usb cables means there's not actually enough room it's impossible to mount it there however you can mount it on the left hand side now this might not be an issue for you depending on the motherboard power connections that you have. However, for me, it definitely was. And that was a real annoyance, <laughs> I'll be honest. However, I could mount it on the left. But if I had two drivers I wanted to mount, I'd have to find somewhere else to do it. Now, there are obviously the three mounting points at the back. And that back plate that I showed you earlier that would fit behind the motherboard, behind the CPU. So there are other places. However, it does limit your options, which is a shame. And also, with the problems I had with the hard disk drive section there's an issue there as well so i feel like there's problems going on with the storage potential here however if you have mvme storage you might not have an issue at all if you're not bothering with ssds or hard disk drives then it's not a problem now we're going on to install the rtx 3080 from msi i'm going to do a video separately on this i'm also going to do a video separately to show you the difference if you vertically mount in this case because i did a video previously on vertically mounting in the 4000d airflow and the difference here is now this case is bigger it has a lot more fans on it, it also has fans pulling air in from the front so i think I think the test will be interesting. So I've benchmarked with this setup and I'm going to benchmark again with it vertically mounted and show you how to do that. So if you want to do vertical mounting with your GPU, be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back to check out the other video that will give you the information you need on how to do it and whether there's any difference in the heat that comes off it. But you can see 38 he has a decent amount of room in there it's quite a chunky card this msi one but it sits in there fairly well i have used msi's little mount to deal with gpu sag and that's that thing that you can see at the front with a supreme on it now going back to the rear you can see as i said i haven't cable tied to a great deal i've used the velcro straps and it kind of looks okay but I can hide it behind this door. You will note that it's not perfect, so the door doesn't close. Uh-oh, this might be a problem, but no, it's okay actually, because once you have that door sort of slightly closed and you put the rear panel on, it clicks into place, screws down, and there's no bulge and no noticeable problems. So now your shame is hidden away behind a door and there's no dramas at all. And then you have the PC nicely running and looking fantastic at the end of the day. Obviously, it defaults to rainbow with the RGB lighting. And that might not be your personal preference, but don't worry. Once you get into Windows, you can go into Corsair's IQ software and change that with ease. As long as everything's connected, as I've shown, it's not a problem. And you can adjust the RGB lighting on the pump head and on all the fans. And then obviously you can go into MSI's Dragon Center. You happen to have a MSI motherboard 
and sync that all up lovely the end result is a very nice looking bit of kit that runs nice and cool and what i will say actually as well is that this case runs quite quietly despite having this number of fans you can obviously control the fan speed of those front and side ones because it's pwm connection so it can be controlled via your motherboard software and you can set zero rpm mode on the aio or quiet mode and it runs quite quietly and that is a bonus and the bonus of the msi gpu is it has also as a zero rpm mode so it won't spin unless it needs to so this case actually ends up being quite quiet and you also have a good bit of cooling on it now you will note that i haven't installed a rear exhaust fan you could potentially do that I would, however, have to work out what I was going to do with the RGB lighting because you probably would need a, another RGB fan hub and then you'd need power. So there's another connection because I've filled all my connections, but you could run it onto a fan header on your motherboard and maybe just put in another RGB hub for that rear or even just not have. Use the air guide fan as the rear if you wanted to, if you weren't too bothered. But what I've opted for here is a pretty good setup. Now, I ran this through Heaven Benchmark, and I'm not going to go into a great deal of depth here, but I will include some of the links in the description so you can check it out. I've done Heaven Benchmark, and I did 3D Mark and PC Mark, and I ran it to test it out there and see how it performed. And the temperatures are actually pretty good. I got some good temperatures out of it. Generally speaking, we were looking at about 60 to 68 degrees for the CPU when running heaven on maximum settings and this is on an enormous samsung monitor as well and then times by stress test gave me 69 degrees c times by extreme was about the same and the real test came when i ran it for about half a day using folding at home on maximum both gpu and cpu loads and things got a bit toasty there where it ran at 70 degrees on the gpu and 80 degrees c on the cpu so it did get fairly warm it was also running very loud so if you do do something that requires quite a lot of power and processing it will use a lot of fan speed and result in it being quite noisy but that's the same for any case to be honest um, folding at home does a lot of pressure but i got some very dirty looks from my wife because she was in the middle of a team's call with work when it was bellowing out a amount of noise and i tested with the sound meter from various different angles and as you can see at the desk it was getting around 50 but then it was topping out at like 70 from the top so the closer you were the noisier it is but it did sound very loud you can probably hear it a little bit in the background as i'm talking now and it won't do it justice it is quite noisy but that is fairly not that standard you, most people won't be running folding at home and for gaming it certainly wasn't that loud but obviously you can go from zero rpm all the way up to extreme performance mode where those fans are spinning giving you the maximum airflow and best performance possible and the end result was a good performance and i've really enjoyed this setup also the aesthetic on the 360 millimeter h150i elite capilix is really nice that pump head looks fantastic those white cables look great too if you want to see more about this and find out more about the rtx 3080 and that elite capilix pump be sure to check out the links in the description and check out my channel in general because i'm going to do separate videos on those and again as i said if you're interested in seeing how this case performs with just two fans in it or at least two case fans then obviously the pump as well then come back for that because i'm going to do that as well and i'm interested to see how that stacks up you're interested to see how it performs with blowing just one fan at the front for intake and then four exhausts because i'm going to use three on the pump and one at the rear and see how that gets on this has been the Provoke Prawn. I hope you found this video useful and made it way all the way to the end. I'm aware it's been a very long one, but thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting, and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you. And have a great life.